Listen, I get this question all the time. Uh, the kids, kids want to know, how did you start Footballville? And they had like it was some fairy dust I sprinkled or something. And, um, but no, nah, like Footballville was just started. It was started from an idea. And idea and it's turned into 250,000 followers throughout social media brand kind of recognition across the nation um but if you turn if you go back to my life and how it started oh my dad was on drugs like my dad was on drugs I saw my dad do cocaine numerous times to this to today if you walk up next to me and you've been doing something you ain't got no business doing I know what it smell like like, I look at you crazy and be like, I mean, my dad beat, beat my mom. Um, then he died when I was 12. Uh, when I was 13, my mom started drinking, drunk herself out of a job. Um, and when I was 14, my friend, cousin shot him in the backyard. He died. High school, one day we was in study hall for a big game. Shots rang out, we got on the ground, walked outside. Classmate laying on the ground. He died. Every year at my high school, somebody got shot. Um, I grew up in the hood. Basically, I came from the hood. And if you're asking why I'm telling you this, I know because somebody out there need to hear this. I mean, we always think we're going through something by ourselves. We're going through something on our own. This is only happening to me. You start asking, talking to your God, saying, hey, why is this happening to me? Um, but... If quit is undefeated, Derek, that's the saying I say all the time, quit is undefeated. You just can't quit. Like, we think back to all the things that we were stressing out about, and oh man, if this happened, it's over. And oh man, I can't believe this, I gotta get this happen. And then you get through it, and you're gonna be all right. One saying I got is this too shall pass. It may be in the Bible or something. I don't know where I got it from. <laughs> but this too shall pass is what I always say. Quit is undefeated. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. You're not the only one going through what you're going through, bro. We all come from trials and tribulations, D, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think. Man, I just want to piggyback on your story, man. Hey, football field has been phenomenal. I want to tip my hat off that I don't have right now to you. <laughs> Uh, but it's been phenomenal. Uh, kids, you guys have been put on the platform various years. A lot of great NFL guys uh, have been on this platform. Right. Uh, a lot of high school athletes, little league athletes are on this platform. And uh, just for me and the whole world, Hey, man, we want to say thank you, bro. I oh, appreciate that, You know, that, for man. everything you've been doing, man, with <laughs> Footballville, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate you that. You know, we appreciate you. Oh, man. You're going to make me cry, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we out. Footballville Podcast Show. We got Daryl Screeter. Derek, Derek Spicer. Derek Spicer. Let's talk about the transfer portal real fast. I mean, how it affects high school kids. Listen, transfer portal, free agency of college football now. If your quarterback's up, you can look into the portal, pull you another quarterback out. University of Miami just picked up one of the most exciting quarterbacks in NCAA right now, college football. De'Aaron King, um, I think he amounted for 40 touchdowns or something like two years ago. Last year he played four games. His daddy realized, hey, man, he done had three officer coordinators, two head coaches. We're going to go ahead and lay down and start this thing over somewhere else. Um, but, the trans but that transfer portal is affecting high school kids, and I don't think y'all realize how. Um... If a college can just say, hey, let's see who's in the transfer portal. This kid has been in college football. He understands how the system works. He'll be an easier transition. They no longer have to look to recruit anymore. They have another option. So I'm telling you this because as recruits, if you got to have your stuff in line, man. You got to take the test early. You got to have your grades in line. 
because these colleges are looking down and they're saying, oh, look, Derek Spicer. Look at his film. His film good. He got his grades. Now nah, he ain't took the test yet. And they moving on. Unless you, unless you four-star, five-star, you can walk on water, they moving on because they don't have to deal with that stuff anymore, Derek. Correct. Right. Yeah, with the transfer portal, guys, uh, it's making it more and more competitive for one, for you guys to keep your scholarships because it's based on a year in, year out deal. Uh, guys are not able to stay in schools uh, based on transfer portals because uh, they're number two, number three. Now they're dropping into the actual portal. You as a high school athlete, you got to have all your ducks in place. Uh, meaning like Daryl said, right. make sure that your SATs is in place, make sure your GPA is in place at all times because they're looking for character first off. Uh, these coaches want character and great players and you excel if you're a high school player. But if you are that actual college player and you're in that transfer portal, you're up against junior college guys as well as Division One guys. So that's what makes it inter interesting because years ago, man, Daryl, I don't know if you know, uh, scholarships were four-year deals. Right. It was kind of like, hey, I'm going to sign on the dotted line with the University of Miami. I'm going to be here four years. I'm going to get my education. But now it's based on your performance right. because these guys are actually investing into you. So right. that investment is on a year-to-year -year base. I mean, we're not going to give you $40,000 to come to our school for a year and then you don't perform. So that's how guys are also dropping into these transfer portals because, because they're not performing. And then what's happening? So they're not performing and the college is doing what with their scholarship? Oh, those scholarships become available to other athletes now. Meaning that, hey, you just seen... They taking them? Oh, they take them. Yeah. You know, I mean... Oh, hey. No, no, let's make that clear. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Make that clear. You know, like let's a bag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. so, so colleges, you get there, you don't perform, you don't want to get to class on time, you don't want to work hard. And colleges are taking scholarships? Man, they taking it like a money bag. You oh, understand? Man. So you are their investment. You are the investment. So therefore, guys, man, make sure if you go to college, man, and you perform or perform while you're in college because if not, man, it's a bag, man. You know, you say you're going to go out there, you're going to represent, you're going to do what you have to do. Well, them coaches, jobs rely on you. Uh, another thing that matters to coaches, uh, just a little off the topic, but still on it. You know, all coaches have an actual grade point average that they need to meet as college coaches. So say, for instance, let's call a team GPA. Right. You got to have a team GPA. So say, for instance, if you don't have your team GPA met, these guys are hurting your GPA. Hey, that's a reason for me to pull them because yeah. I need guys on my team. So you're talking about like an average. An average. Like, like an average. I need GPA. guys that's going to help me meet those criteria. Right. So all this thing plays a part. You know, it's an investment from right. coaches to you. You got to make sure that you're doing your job. Or you might be in the next transfer portal.